Pancreas cancer still has us sort of on the ropes. We're on our heels a bit. The other cancers, even cholangiocarcinoma, liver cancers, colon cancers, we've been making sort of nice big jumps in improvement. And in pancreas cancer, we're making small steps still. So what I'm hopeful is that we will uncover all sorts of things. How do people get it? Why do they get it? Will there be a screening test to try and detect early disease? Improvements in therapies, whether it's in the neoadjuvant setting or in the metastatic setting sort of understanding what makes this thing tick. And I think what's really fascinating, because this disease is sort of specific about this, is it creates this sort of fibrotic shell um, around the cancer. And so our drugs are like trying to get in and they can't get in. And so we're now beginning to target that, the body's reaction to the cancer, in a hope that we can now get our therapies to where they need to go and improve outcomes. So we're learning, we're taking this baby apart and I am hopeful that the next five to 10 years, we will see those big steps that we're seeing in other cancers. In the field of advanced pancreatic adenocarcinoma, we're making solid, meaningful, significant steps forward in improvement. These are not giant leaps yet. We're hoping we'll get there, but at least we're moving the needle and we're adding different line of therapy and we're building on what's a standard of care being the front line and the second line. There is uh, excitement. If we look on the clinicaltrials.gov, you see the number of clinical trials ongoing in pancreatic adenocarcinoma. I cannot reiterate it even more than this. Consider every patient for clinical trials. This is a disease of the elderly. We recognize that, although we have patients even in, as young as in their 30s. We are an aging population, and it's a problem that's not going to disappear overnight. We're going to live long enough. We're going to be facing this disease at higher risk. The good news is with the improvement on bringing into clinical trials uh, different molecules that have been efficacious or show some signal of efficacy in one disease state and there is evidence that it can work in pancreatic adenocarcinoma. We're seeing more collaboration between different pharmaceutical companies across different academic centers to really uh, fuel and accelerate the development of these clinical trials. This is the best time that we had in the last 20 years at bringing these combinations to clinics. Only time would tell us about the efficacy, and of course all that is taken into consideration with a grain of what's the economics as well. Having efficacy is not enough, we understand that. The cost of taking care of cancer patients is uh, going up, and it's very important to have the least toxic drugs, keep the patients out of the hospitals, and give them great quality of life. For a long time, I thought surgery was not really that useful for pancreas cancer. Um, because it's a big operation, there was a lot of morbidity from it, and, um, and it didn't cure very many people. Unlike most of our surgeries in cancer that surgery cures people, pancreas cancer, almost everybody had microscopic metastatic disease. Yes, we've moved the bar in adjuvant. We've improved things by adding capecitabine to gemcitabine. Uh, in the adjuvant setting, so more people are being cured of their disease. But I think really what I'm excited about is this sort of combined modality neoadjuvant approach. We see a lot of patients with locally advanced pancreas cancer, no obvious metastatic disease. Treatments are improving, we're seeing regressions. Our radiation colleagues, our interventional radiation, our radiology docs are all sort of working together, pulling this thing back down and ultimately pulling the root, if you will, surgically. And so as we begun to think about chemo first approach, I'm actually quite excited about this uh, in the hopes that that kind of approach will lead to more cures.